Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Insta4 here. Today I am back to cover a deck profile that nobody asked for, but I really wanted to cover it. It's Juggernaut Maximum Maximum. Now, Juggernaut Maximum Maximum used to be a G guard, and it is the evolution of Juggernaut Maximum, who is a Spike Brothers classic. One of the he's the first unit you actually see in the world of the Vanguard enemy, and he's also somebody that's a very strongly recurring whenever we talk about you know, OG Spikes or like Spikes V, the first wave, this tends to be the name that appears. As well as other stuff like the infamous Skydiver, who is also making an appearance this set. But they've chosen to actually restyle Juggernaut Max Maximum into his own boss unit. And his playstyle is featured around some of the new things that V has brought to Spike Brothers. The first wave of V Spikes has a mechanic where your units can move themselves into the soul and call a new copy of themselves at the start of every turn. They tag out for a fresh copy and then reuse their own place effects. Not only does this build the soul, this also builds you a pretty strong board with high numbers, high multi-attacking and it can end games pretty quickly. And their first boss, General Siegfried, has always the age horribly, but Jungle Max Max One is actually quite a fun boss to build around as just a budget deck by itself and this is relatively cheap. Of course, there are a few expensive staples here, but it's not all that bad. So, today we're actually going to cover the deck in its entirety and see what we can actually do with Juggernaut Maximum Maximum. Our great 3 lineup, we obviously play 4 copies of Juggernaut Maximum Maximum, 4 copies of Juggernaut Maximum, 3 copies of Skydiver, as well as we do actually play uh, 4 Hugards here. So let's actually cover this real quick. I'm going to start off with, I think the more obvious one, uh, it's the heal guards. So why are we playing heal guards is because, you know, we don't want to, you know, be rushed. We rather, you know, have great trees in the deck, they're nice to have, and this prevents early rush. Although we do need color blast, we don't need it that significantly. One to two points is normally good enough for early game to play. And then of course the next great tree I want to cover is Juggle Maximum. Juggle Maximum has two skills. Uh, during your main phase, you can uh, slide him into the soul, search your deck for a new copy of Juggle Maximum, and call it to the rear guard. So yeah, it's a uh, it's it, it seems to explain itself pretty easily. It is nice. It gets itself a pretty good beater at a relatively fast speed. So there is really no big problem with it but the thing is that it's obviously just a beat stick. The second skill is that it moves itself into the soul so you can see this is a rear guard style unit it's not really something you want to ride if you ride it it's just you know 23k will turn and then after that that's it so you normally just don't want to ride this guy but he is really good in the early game especially when you can call him a 23k beater and as you can see there are ways to actually play around and make the best use of juggler maximum to threaten people. Of course, the boss of this deck is Juggernaut Maximum Maximum. Maximum Maximum has, of course, two skills. His first skill is, is your opponent is great three or greater at the start of your main phase. This unit, as in Juggernaut Max Maximum, gets a skill that you can give all units placed during this turn an additional 5k power. It's during your main phase and during your opponent's main phase, and you also can give them 5k shield, which means this works defensively. So if your opponent's great tree greater, all your cards gain an additional 5k shield because every guardian is freshly placed. As for your own turn, any card you call will also gain 5,000 power. So when you use your skills to call new units, they will give uh, they'll gain a free 5,000 power for free. Everyone knows that a free 5,000 power to your offensive board is pretty strong because Night Rose, one of the former meta decks, now all hail 7 Cs, had that trait, and there's a reason why she was good for so long until 7 Cs. So, when it comes to Juggernaut Maximum, Maximum is essentially almost the same thing, just a lot better than that, but it is locked to a great trigger greater clause. Keep that in mind. Second skill is, at the end of Bell's unit attacks, you can Soul Blast 3 cards. If 4 more of your units will place this turn, choose one of your columns and stand all the units in it. If Juggernaut Maximum, Maximum, this guy stands, you have to minus 1 drive from him, and at the end of the turn, you put all your regards in the bottom of the deck. So, at first glance, it seems okay, but it's really overly balanced thanks to Rising Nova. You so much 3, that's a fair cost. 4 of your units will be called this turn. That's alright, it can be played around. But then you instantly net 
you instantly bought nuke yourself by putting all the bomb in deck and you get a minus one drive it's just so much minusing but the thing is spikes builds bots really easily as you can see it's really quite easy to build the bot i play excessive amount of cards to build a bot because this is really quite a fearful skill for yourself it's quite a bad detriment although some people will not recommend it but i feel it's better this way in addition you know it does reward you because you have a lot of kill pressure in this deck you have stuff like jungle maximum making appearance on turn two you have other stuff and that really abuses all the numbers so really you can push for game quite easily with the jungle maximum maximum deck just keep in mind that the self nuke is pretty painful but in some cases it does help because you have limited copies of cards in the deck right so if you need fresh copies you can just nuke your whole board back and next turn you can just call them all back with stuff so that is a nice application for it and of course i actually play three copies of skydive now some people are against skydiver and that's fine people are also against wonder boy and that's fine but I feel Skydiver keeping it in 3 makes it sure that in the later stages of the game, just having 1 to 2 copies used in circulation can allow you to replenish your deck with the right units so that you don't actually lose out on your abilities to call from your deck. So, let's tell you what he does. When placed on Vanguard or Railway Circle, although you should never ride him, uh, choose 2 normal units from your drop and put a bomb on your deck. He gains 5,000 power for each. So he goes up to 23k, so he's basically just the same as Juggle Maximum Maximum. Just that, you know, Jungle Max one, not Max one, Max one. So it's alright, you know, it's a pretty good 23k meter, and he does replenish your deck with two cards. Okay, nice. And his own skill is at the start of the mid, and uh, during the main phase, you can slime with soul, search your deck for a copy of, you know, himself, and call it. So, okay, it's practically the same thing. You will see this skill a lot. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep saying it. Jungle, uh, honestly, for Skydiver, you only need him at 3 because. 4 copies is quite excessive in my opinion, you really don't need him that much and he kind of breaks out more rather than not because if you just don't have cards to cycle back or you just don't want to cycle back, then it's, it, 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 he's really pathetic but other than that, he does have his uses so I do recommend keeping him around, he's drawn by the Nairos artist and I really like the style and Skydiver is my favourite Spike Brothers unit so yeah, I just had to play him, he's cool. Moving on to the grade twos, we play four copies of Adopt's Pam Roma, we play four copies of Agile Fullback, and we play two copies of this is Breach Sprout. So let's actually break it down real quick. So for uh Adopt's Pam Roma is probably one of the cards that you recognize because she's in stuff like Rising Nova and a lot of other grade three heavy decks. But what does she do? When placed on Vanguard Rear Guard Circle, call Bass one, search your deck for a grade three unit and call it to the rear guard. That's it. So you can call it your jump on maximum, call it your skydiver. Yeah, as early as turn two. Pretty good, right? And then of course his second her second skill is on the regular circle. If you have a great tree, in the same column as her, she needs boost. So you can even just straight up call jungle maximum maximum or skydiver in front of her and it easily becomes a 33k column. That is really strong no matter how you put it. 33k column for just one card and the color blast is that's good, you know, that's good. So definitely do play her at 4, she does work at any stage of the game But the only thing is, you know, in terms of Color Blast, we only have 2 cards that really use it effectively And Color Blast are your main ways to build bots, so do keep that in mind Then uh, I play 2 cards of Beach Sprout just to fill out ratios And because Beach Sprout is pretty good and does complement Skydiver Beach Sprout is one of the only rare guards in his deck that doesn't have a tag on skill or build a bot So you're kind of wondering why is he here when he attacks, choose a normal unit and put it to the bottom of your deck. And when he attacks, all of your opponent's rear guards must intercept if possible. Then at the end of the battle, you slam the soul, you draw one card. It's Zuitan mixed together with a practical destruction of all your intercept of your opponent's intercepts. Recycling and a draw. So it essentially covers so many forms at once. Really, this card is more of a tank because you just need to use them once or twice to really kick in. And it helps especially when you want your board to evaporate or you want to net deck your entire board. Just calling him to attack, move your soul and draw is just more than appreciated. Everything else he does is more than a compliment. So really it's up to you how many copies of this guy you do want to play. I play two because I feel you know I, I need spots for other stuff that you'll see much later. But if you want to play more, that's also your call. 
and for the MVP of this deck, it's Agile Fullback. Agile Fullback is what makes Juggernaut Maximum 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 really good because he works in tandem with him so well that I always believed that they were in the same set. They are not. Agile Fullback, when placed on the regular circle, gains the ability to attack from the back row if he's caught behind the Vanguard. And if caught by a counter ability, he gains 10 including his own on place and then of course his second skill is at the during the main phase you can slide into the soul call another copy of him which means essentially you can attack with agile fullback then you can attack maximum then you can reach the maximum and agile fullback and repeat it again that's four attacks from the center column at an average of 23k to even 38k uh, that is insane no matter how you want to put it so really this guy is a must play in a lot of Smite Brothers decks because he gives you the extra attack from the back row. If you haven't picked up your copies of Agile Fullback, do pick it up. So yeah. Our grade ones, we play four copies of Ambush Dexter. We play four copies of the Reckless Express. And we play three, four copies of Acrobat Verde. So let's break it down real quick. I'm going to start Acrobat Verdi, she's our Great Tree Searcher. You want to play her because you want to see all your Great Trees on time. You don't really want to search out copies of your Maximum or your Skydiver if you fully intend to have them in circulation in the deck. But I tell you someone you definitely do want to see copies of and that's Maximum Maximum. So obviously you're going to need a Great Tree Searcher to facilitate all of this. So definitely play her. One of the newer cards in this set that a lot of people are kind of mixed feelings on but I feel has earned the spot for me is Reckless Express. Reckless Express, when placed on a Vanguard Circle, you can pay this cost with Surplus 1. If not, when you can pay with a Counter Blast if it's you know, on a Rearguard. When placed on a Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, Counter Blast 1, look at the top 7 cards of your deck, call a card from among them as Rest and shuffle the deck. So, it calls a card as Rest and you have no way of standing it, which means you have to wait a whole turn before it works, which is horrible if it's on turn 3 and onwards, unless you just want to have more co copies to just call and then just bought that yourself with maximum maximum. Not very great, but on turn 1, his high roll potential is insane. When you place him on a Vanguard Circle, you get yourself one of these, you get yourself one of these, or even a Beach Sprout or an Agile Fullback, and you're set. Because they're going to help you run for the rest of the game, and you're going to be able to steamroll this so much advantage as long as you ride it. So the Ability to plus so far, and it only costs you a soul blast by the way if you ride it, which is even better. So all in all, you're just gonna gain so much advantage just from placing the kind of Vanguard circle. The ability for it to exist is just wonderful. Its second skill is the same skill at the start of the main phase, and during the main phase, you can slide into the soul, such a deck for not copy and call, which means you can slide in Reckless Express, call Reckless Express, use Reckless Express, call something as rest. So you can actually build the board with that, but Every time you use Reckless Expresses on play skill, it is a counter blast and uh, you're going to see someone who uses that a lot better. So just keep in mind that Reckless Express isn't the best card in this deck, but just given what it does, it's alright. You can play other great ones in this spot, definitely you can play stuff like Wonder Boy even. I feel that it would certainly you know give you enough mileage to make it worth it, but you know if you don't like other cards and you want to try building boards or you're just worried about back to maximum board decking your entire board i would say please do actually stay and opt for the reckless express our last great one is ambush dexter ambush dexter is one of the strongest great ones in spike brother and very frankly you should own him if you're intending to play this clan ambush dexter when placed on vanguard circle you discard a card and you drop cool don't use this skill. Second skill is uh, when placed on rearguard circle, count plus one and choose one of your rear guards. Your grade two greater rear guards and move them to the soul. Choose your deck. Search up to two units from your deck with the same greater deck unit and call it the rear guard. So let's say for example I have uh, you know a juggernaut maximum on the field. I count plus one, I slam to the soul, I get to spawn two sky divers from that. And I get to choose as long as it's just of the same grade. Which is wow, that is really good you know I, I get to you know I still get a plus one I get to move a unit into the soul if I need a soul and then I just swap but can it get even better yes for your grade two lineup I can move something like beach park to the soul and I can instantly set up into let's say an agile fullback which is an attacker from the back row 
and into the number drop spam Roma. Roma, with a counter blast, can just hold and instantly give me a 33k color. So, really, you can pop off with the great turn, with the great 2 or great 3 cards. No matter what you have, your bots are pretty easy and consistent to build to gain your very, very, very high numbers. It's just wonderful ambush dexter is really such a great card in my opinion. So if you're intending to play spikes, you need to pick this guy up if you can, because he's really expensive. Our great zeros, we play uh, we play eight crit because we want to end the game. We play four draw PG, and then we play of course everyone's favorite starter, Mega Trainer. Because I like Mega Trainer. He's fun. He's iconic. Yeah, but if you're wondering what was our great, what was our heals again, they were actually the heal cards. So just keep in mind. And yeah, that quickly wraps up the juggernaut maximum maximum deck profile. I built this deck on whim because I was just wanting to try spice again, and you know, very honestly, I'm impressed. I feel for a deck that you know is not very popular. Jungle Max Maximum really keeps up to the idea of spikes being a really solid road. You can play it with stuff like Rising, or you could just choose to play stuff like you know just Dudley's all together. And you know what? You would still have fun. And this deck is also fun in its own right. So if you're interested in playing a false deck that you know is threatening and can compete in the early game, you know, and has a pretty nice finisher, I recommend this deck easily. And for its price point, you can definitely play it competitively as well. So just keep that in mind. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Uh, I want to say a few things before I end this video. I definitely do want to give a shout out to Lord Dravo for actually helping me in the creation of this deck profile because I don't actually play spikes that often. I'm not a living group, but he did and he actually gave me a lot of handy advice for this deck as well as good tech tips and whatnot. So I know this list looks nothing like yours. So I just still want to say thank you for all the advice you've given me. I also want to thank, you know, some of my friends who also helped me ship the cards to me because some of them were just actually out of stock. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.